This video is the first one in the series of the subject of production economics and we will cover it with various tools that is the diagrams and mathematical tools as well as we will use econometrics because these are various ingredients that can be used to analyze the production side of the economy. So let us have the introduction of this uh, sub-branch of economics. Basically we need to understand and declare what is production and production is a process in which there is transformation of something from one state into another. So when we are able to transform one thing into another it is production. But it is not necessary that every transformation is production because if uh, it is not of utility for us after transformation that is the uh, garbage after the rain it turns into something else it is not of any use for us it becomes more undesirable so this is not production this is this is actually transformation from one form of one thing into another but it is definitely not production because it doesn't give us anything of any worth or desire for us so we have uh, understood this thing that not every transformation is the act of production. For instance, uh, a transformation can be of plastic into laptop uh, and definitely a piece of plastic may not be of any uh, significant utility for us but when it comes to a laptop which uses that plastic it is something of quite a bit of value for us. And um, if something uh, is transformed into some other form it can also be consumption it's not necessary that it is production it can also be consumption when liquid fuel is converted into gaseous form within a vehicle it is transformation but this time it is the process of consumption of fuel in a vehicle so consumption can also be an outcome of transformation However, we are focusing on uh, that state which is preferred. So that more preferred state is usually the production process that we are focusing on in this subject. The acts of production can be in more than one forms. We can focus on the quantity of something that is the number of cars that we produce or uh, the quality of the cars we produce. Both of these things are indicating the process or the acts of production. Uh, when we change the uh, location of the uh, vehicles or any other commodity it is also an act of production because the spatial distribution is changing and it can cause um, some revenue for us when we are able to sell it. Time can also matter, uh, temporal state of the cards or any other commodity that is stored for some time and it is sold when the prices are high or the opportunity is better. So geographical and time uh, related side of the production is also there for us to exploit. So all of these are various acts of production that the producers do. There are factors of production that combine and give rise to production. For example, land, we know about it, land is the um, thing that may give us some sort of output or production even without the involvement or input of the human beings or labor. Fruits, trees and fishes, they are grown uh, without the involvement of human beings as labor. So labor is also there, it does some effort, it sums some and uses some intelligence and it is basically the process of the input of uh, labor. And we talk about the capital, it is uh, used to um, engage land and labor and it is done in um, two ways, for example, um, capital can be fixed, it can be circulating. The fixed capital is as the name goes, it is fixed, it doesn't change after the production process. For example, the machinery, it remains the same, it is still there after the production of process. Um, process of production remains intact it doesn't go anywhere the machinery it is still there even after the production is complete 
doesn't uh, become a part of the output as mentioned here as the other kind of capital is circulating in nature because it continues to circulate from one form into another and becomes a part of the output that is the product this is why we can call it consumable capital because it is a kind of capital that is consumed for instance the raw material that we produce in the production process it is consumed this is why it is known as the circulating capital so these are the two major components of the capital and then is the entrepreneur who has the ability to merge land labor capital into one production unit now uh, these um, factors of production they have their rewards for the endeavors that they do and for land owner we have rent that we pay to him and uh, though land is actually a free nature of uh, gift of the nature but the institution of uh, private property uh, puts a rent on it so this is the reward of the factor of production that is land and then we have wage which is given to the labor and it is actually the price of the layer that he is sacrificing because um, a layer is something that one can have but if one wants to do labor he has to sacrifice the layer and then the interest is paid to the capital owner one who is owning the capital this is the compensation for the abstinence from current consumption because this capital that the capital owner could have consumed he is not consuming it right now and uh, the process of abstinence is there he is waiting and he is delaying his current consumption so for the compensation of the sacrifice we pay interest to the capital owner finally we have the um, profit which is paid to the entrepreneur for the risk taking that he does for uh, combining the labor land and capital to come up with something productive that is the output so this is how we uh, have various rewards for the factors of production now the next thing that should uh, be discussed here uh, is the measurement of the output because uh, production process actually gives us output so how we can measure it there is one uh, famous way of measuring it and it is known as the index number that indicates the comparison between the current level of output and the previous level of output it can be uh, some other year as well the base year is what we use to represent the year with which we are comparing the current level of output so this is why we call it a base year here we are denoting it with zero and the current time period is represented by one so output in the current time period divided by the output in the last time period is going to give us this index number so this is the current out, uh, output that is the output in the current year it has three components because we are expecting that three commodities are produced these are agricultural outputs that is wheat W is representing wheat, P is representing the price of wheat and not is representing the price in the base year. This is the quantity of wheat produced in the current year. This is the price of the uh, good that is barley in the base year, output produced of barley in the current year, price of oats in the base year and output of the oats in the current year in the same way the this is the sum which is showing the output in the base here here now this is uh, comprising of wheat barley and oats and you can see the superscript is basically for the base here the quantities as well as the price they are all in the base here because we are talking about the base here here so uh, this is the array of all the uh, notations used in this formula of index number. 
uh, another important thing uh, besides this uh, array of the various notations and what they stand for is the non-dimensionality of the index number because it is not bound by any measurement unit that we might use for various uh, outputs uh, the measurement units they are not any problem because we are going to take the weighted average of the individual outputs that we are producing and the um, answer is not affected by the units that we use to measure various outputs finally in this uh, video we uh, conclude by focusing on various processes that can be there in the production of a single good because a uh, good cannot necessarily be um, a process in which only one good is produced it can have more than one stages and even in those stages a commodity can be uh, an intermediary commodity or good or it can be a complete commodity for instance uh, if we consider the production of steel um, it has at least three processes the first process is the process of mining and in mining we use capital as input labor as input and land as input once we do this we get iron ore uh, in the process of mining and we have an output that can be further used as an input as you can see here it is used as an input which is being uh, used uh, by labor and uh, along with capital to make iron which is the output of the second process which is the process of iron production iron itself is a commodity however we can use this iron further with capital and labor as inputs to make the steel which is our final product that we want to produce so you see a process of production can be uh, a sum of various processes if uh, the output the final output that we are looking for is not readily produced in the process uh, of production rather it is produced in phases or processes so this is how a little bit of introduction of the production economics is given here gradually we will go towards the details of various topics in it and in the next one we will talk about the production function and its details. Thank you.